I'm going to walk you through how to use the CoderByte website. Uh, this is CoderByte.com. Um, I'm assuming you've already signed up for a user account. Uh, you'll want to do that before you start this so you can save your progress and, um, and keep track of, of how you progress. Once you've done that, I want you to go to this Solve Programming Challenges link and click on that. That'll take you to a list of programming challenges and you'll see they have different levels of challenges, easy, medium, hard. Uh, obviously we're going to want to start off with the easy challenges and kind of work our way up from there. Um, so I'm going to start off with this simple adding challenge. Just uh, I think this is a good really kind of beginner example and walk you through the utility and show you how to use the tool. Um, so we'll just select this challenge. Uh, this is going to you can see here they give you points for um, solving the challenge and for time. Uh, don't worry about the time for now. It's more important to you know just get it right and kind of understand the material and it's not about speed at this point. So we're going to click take this challenge. Um, of course we're going to use JavaScript, our language of choice, and start coding. So what we see here when we get to the page is that at the top of the page here we see uh, we see the challenge as laid out. So it's saying using JavaScript, have the function simple adding with a parameter of num, add up all the numbers from one to that variable num or that parameter num. For the test cases, the parameter num will be any number from one to 1,000. What that means is after you write your function, they will test your function with all numbers one to 1,000 to see if if that works. So you don't have to put in all the numbers from 1 to 1000 to test your function. They'll do that for you. They're just kind of specifying that. Um, so let's take a look here. Um, what they've done here is they've kind of given you a function as a starting point so you don't kind of have to start from scratch here. And then what they've done is they've added this simple adding read line. And what this does is this calls the simple adding function that you're writing and they're just reading in the line over here in their in this parameter testing area. Um, so you don't need to touch this, it works. What this is really doing is taking the value that's in this parameter testing uh, field and basically substituting it there. So with, with the parameter eight, really what this is gonna look like is that, but they kind of automate this for you with a nice tool. So we're just gonna leave that be. Um, so what this is over here, parameter testing, obviously, um, we see our num is our named parameter that we see over here that goes into our simple adding function. And here we can set values. So I can set 12, um, you know, and so on. I'm going to leave it at 8. And what you do is you come over here in simple adding function and you write your functionality just to make this thing work. Um, with the challenge being um, adding all the numbers from one to whatever number is passed into this function, I automatically can assume that I need a for loop. So I'm going to start off with by writing a standard for loop. Uh, I'm going to start off with var i equals zero, like you usually do. And while i is less than or equal to the number that's passed into my function, I want this loop to continue to execute. And at the end of the loop, I want every time I want the value of i to be incremented or have one added to it every time. So that's kind of a standard for loop and that's what's really good about CoderByte is uh, for loops are hard for people generally when they're starting out and CoderByte gives you a lot of exercises in writing for loops. Um, so now that I have my for loop written, um, I know that part of the challenge is that I have to keep a running sum, right? A, a running sum of the numbers I'm adding together. So I'm going to go ahead up here. Well, actually I'll keep it inside of here just to keep this consistent. And I'm gonna say var sum and I'm gonna set it to a value of zero because right now it has no value. I don't want to change the value of num and return it here because that's that's my input parameter and I need to know what that value was for my for loop to continue to only go as far as it needs to go based on the input parameter. Um, so 
having said that, in calculating sum to be the return value and not num, I'm going to change that. So now, now that I have my my temporary variable storage set here to keep my adding uh, addition, and I'm returning that, I can kind of focus on the inner contents of my for loop to work towards achieving the challenge by summing these numbers. Um, so what I'm going to do here is, again, my first loop, i is going to be less than zero, or equal to zero, and I want this loop to continue to run while i is less than or equal to the value of num. And the value of num in this first test scenario is over here, you see, is the value 8. So basically I want this loop to run while i is less than or equal to 8, and as soon as it's greater than 8, it will stop. So inside of my for loop, I now need to calculate this value of sum. So basically what I want to do is every time this loop runs, I want to take, on the right side, I want to take the existing value of sum and add it to the current value of i, and then store, remember our, our exp expressions always read right to left, um, so we want the value, current value of sum plus the current value of i to be the new value of sum on the left. And what that's going to do is continue to add each number from 1 to 8 to our running sum total. And then when i is greater than 8, this is going to stop and we're going to hit our return here. Another way you can do this that will work the same is you don't have to write this sum plus i on the right hand side. You can do this and do whatever is comfortable for you starting off but you can actually do this plus equals is means takes the take the current value of the left hand side and add it to the right hand side and store the output of that calculation into your variable on the left hand side so that may be a little bit confusing when you're starting out so i like to be a little bit more explicit and show this that the the value of this calculation sum plus the value of i is the new value of sum. So we'll kind of walk through this is that the current on our first loop i is going to be 0, sum is going to be 0, and so 0 plus 0 on our first loop is 0. So that's kind of silly in this exercise but it's a standard way of writing for loops so I'm really just trying to emphasize the point of this is kind of how you start a for loop in most cases. The second time this loops, remember here our third parameter to our for, uh, our for loop is i++, plus plus, which means at the end of every loop, add 1 to i, increment i by 1. So the second time this runs, our value of i is going to be 1. Sum will still be 0 based on our, our previous calculation. And so th the second time our loop runs, it will be 0 plus 1 on our right-hand side. And the value of that will be put on the left hand side. So after the second time this runs, we will have sum with a value of 1. The, sec the third time this runs, i will now be incremented again with the v and we'll have the value of 2. So this third time this runs, we're going to take the current value of sum, which is 1 based on our previous iteration, and we're going to add 2 to it. And the current value of sum at that point will be 3, and so on and so forth. Um, so to demonstrate this, I'm, I can now run my code, see if it runs. I don't get any errors, so that's great. Um, they're kind enough to give us a few um, sample inputs and outputs to s test our function. So I'm going to use theirs. Uh, sample input of 12 and see if I get the output of 78 here in my box. So I run that and I get 78. That's great. That looks good. Uh, I want to make sure that I that it works for multiple inputs, so I'm going to also test their second sample, input and output. And for input of 140, I should have an output of 9,870. So if I run my code again, it looks like that works. I have the output I'm expecting, and so at this point, I feel pretty confident that I wrote this properly, and I'm going to submit my code. If you're ever working on a challenge and can't finish it, 
you can also save and load code and pick up where you uh, left off previously. So I'm going to submit my code here. Yes, I'm sure. It's going to now, if you remember from the text, it's going to run 1 through 1,000 against my function and see that it match it, it works or it validates in all of those test cases. And if so, I should get a nice message saying that I completed the challenge successfully and I can move on to the next one. So we'll give this just a second. And it should be coming along any second now. There's a lot of code being processed at the moment, apparently. Either that or I completely broke coder byte. Wow, this is really slow. Um, well, instead of having dead time, uh, so that's kind of a standard approach for using a for loop to start anytime you need to really kind of start with a range um, and you know start at one end of a range and build your way up to you know a maximum part of that range. For loops are kind of the the perfect example for that. Is that it will um, it, it will continue to loop over while your condition um, is true. And then as soon as your condition, which in our case was i is less than or equal to num, as soon as that evaluates to false, it will move on and um, to, to your, the code that you have after that. Um, so this isn't finishing. I'm not sure why. It's really not the point of this exercise. So I'm going at, oh, there we go. So if you can see here, um, my test case points were five. It means that nice job, all test case outputs were correct. So my function works against every number, one through a thousand. My running total of the sum of those numbers works. Uh, I got three points for time period. Again, that's not important. Um, learning is important. Time, you know, the, the amount of time it takes to complete, especially when you're starting out, is not important at all. Uh, so that wraps up this uh, this exercise. Go ahead and jump into CoderByte and feel free to play around. Uh, pick some exercises that you're comfortable with or that you understand what uh, what needs to be done, and and have fun with it.